All right, very good. Well, again, thank you for joining us. This is webinar number one. We're going to talk about modeling the way and the personal values, your personal leadership values exercise today. So why are we doing this program? So our purpose, having the whole leadership certificate program, our purpose is increasing the quality and supply of leaders in the association, in our utilities, in our businesses, and really in our larger community because leadership can really be demonstrated anywhere and, and one of, probably one of the most important places is that we demonstrate leadership in our community and not just, not just at work. So uh, again, it's sponsored by the PNCWA Leadership Development Committee. And we've also been working with the Pacific Northwest section of the AWWA Personal Leadership Committee. And you'll see later that that's where we're going to hold our closing workshop at their conference in May. So that's, uh, that's our smiling faces, myself and JD. And uh, we've got 20 people, I believe, that registered for the webinar today. So welcome. If you were part of the workshop, uh, uh, thank you very much again for joining us and continuing your leadership journey. If you were part of the workshop, thank you very much. I think you'll you'll still get a lot out of this webinar today, and we'll we'll, we'll definitely backtrack a little bit. It'll be a nice review for those who were at the workshop, and it will also provide those who are new to this an opportunity to um, become familiar with the with the five practices. So the expectations and outcomes for today, we'd like to review and continue our leadership journey. And again, we really like to welcome new participants. This should be uh, a great opportunity to get familiar with the, the leadership uh, the leadership challenge. Some more specific objectives. We're going to review the five practices of exemplary leadership. And in particular, we're going to dive into practice number one, which is model the way. We've got an example of a personal leadership values exercise that we'll do that J.D. and I had an opportunity to go through, and we're going to encourage you to do the same, and we'll walk through that near the end of the presentation. And finally, we want you to commit to actions that you'll take in the next three weeks to become a better leader. And that's really what this is all about, try to become a better leader. I have a question. I have a, a button here that says only staff can participate on the conference call. And I have one question here that says there's no sound through one person's telephone. Ah. Michael, is that something you can help us with? The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Looks like it's working now. Hello and welcome. Did, Michael, do I need to restart the webinar? I think we should keep going. Keep going. Let's keep going. All right. So our um, so the objectives, I'll just review those again. We're going to talk about the five practices. We're going to review practice number one. And we're going to do a personal leadership values exercise. And then we'd like you to commit to actions you'll take in the next three weeks to become a better leader. You know, we talked about this, and, and this is something that's stressed, uh, you know, in the book that we've been basing this information on, basing this, uh, this certificate program on, and, that, and it really comes down to four things. Leadership is open to everyone, so no matter who you are, where you are, you can be a leader, right where you're at. Leadership is a relationship. Without followers, there is no, <laughs> you know, you're not leading anyone except yourself, which is a good thing, but... Really, it's really about a relationship and it's establishing that relationship with the people that you work with. Uh, leadership is everyone's business. Organizations filled with great leaders are great organizations. And those leaders can be anywhere in the organization, not just an anointed few. And leadership development is self-development. So as you become a leader and become a better leader, uh, you really become, I think frankly, and this has been true for me, you really do become a better person. We've got a couple of slides here on, on reasons why this is a good thing. Uh, leaders who employ these five practices, they tend to create higher performing teams, generate increased sales and customer satisfaction for those of us who are, for those who are in the, the business world, foster loyalty and organizational commitment, enhance motivation and willingness to work hard, 
more successful represent their units to management. So in other words, they're able to, uh, the folks in your group, when they're working with uh, management, they can better articulate uh, what's going on in your group. It extends the range of agency services. It also promotes involvement in schools, enlarge the religious congregations as part of the, being a whole part of the community, being better leaders in our community. It increases fundraising results and expands gift giving. Reduces absenteeism, turnover, dropouts, and influences recruitment positively. And these are just uh, some of the best reasons, I think, some of the top reasons why having leadership is really really makes a difference in our in our organizations and in our community. So now I'm going to turn it over to Jadeen, and she's going to do a review of the five practices. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a short summary of the five practices of exemplary leadership, and then um, we'll jump into a little more in-depth on the first practice, which is model the way. So as you know, the leadership certificate program is based on research done by James Cousy and Barry Posner, um, the Leadership Challenge. It's now in its fifth edition. About This is the 25th anniversary. So most of us received a copy of this workshop. Uh, most of us received a copy of, the, copy of this book in the workshop. And I hope you've had a chance to set aside some time and start reading um, hopefully the first three chapters to get you through Bottle the Way. Uh, and I hope that reading is going well. If you don't have a copy, uh, they are available through Amazon. They're about $18. And it is a very practical guide filled with lots of examples. And as you read through each chapter, there's sets of questions at the end where you can start thinking to yourself about the practice and how you can implement that. So just a general summary of the five practices. Uh, the first one being model the way, followed by inspire a shared vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, and encourage the heart. Uh, we'll review each one of these in a little bit of detail, and then we'll get into Model the Way. So I'll do just a short one here on Model the Way. Uh, the practice really focuses on clarifying your values so that you can share them with others and your teammates. Um, you want to have a better understanding of what your values are, what drives you, what motivates you, and then you can find your voice and be able to affirm your shared values. So once you can clarify your values, you'll be able to set examples and align the actions that you take um, to be able to um, have people understand what's important to you, as well as for you to understand where you want to go in the future. Um, I really like this quote. Um, leaders stand up for their beliefs, and they show their actions, they show by their actions that they live by the values that they profess. And as you work through today's webinar, I really hope that you start putting your actions um, into practice, um, following your, your values. Oops. Go back here. here it is. So next, once you understand your values, you can um, then be able to inspire a shared vision. The two key elements to inspire a shared vision is um, to be able to see where you are now and where you, you and your team want to go. You can take the time to think about your, you want to be able to take the time to think about your future and how are you going to be part of that future and, um, and actively participate in leading your team into that exciting future. What are the possibilities that your team can go, go through? If you understand what you want, then you'll be able to express that and find a shared vision um, and, and uh, be able to move your team forward. Um, and that also allows you to appeal to other people's aspirations and be able to see what your common threads are. I think there's this great quote, uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. I think that's Proverbs. And um, really, if, if you don't know where you're going, other people um, can't follow you and you can't lead them. So it's, the focus on this one would be sharing or emphasizing like, that common vision and bringing everyone into a conversation.
The next practice is uh, challenging the process. This really um, follows up from the shared vision. If you um, know where you, if you know what you want as a vision, then you can start saying how else, how do we get there? What things do we have to do to make uh, make those changes? Because change is inevitable, and good leaders are actively um, seeking to participate in change. It's going to happen to you one way or another. So if you're part of it, part of the process, you can um, make things happen that you want that that are, that are part of your vision. So to make things better. You can grow, um, you have opportunities to innovate and improve, both yourself and your team. And if you're just maintaining the status quo, that, that just breeds mediocrity. And then you aren't growing, you're kind of stuck in the rut. You can't get out and do something different. So be open to experimentation. Um, be able to take risks yourself, allow others to be able to take risks, and then learn from your experiences. This practice is really about thinking outside the box, getting experiences that are outside your norm, and growing from them. Um, one example would be the Starbucks Frappuccino, right? The, that was actually developed or invented by a, a store manager. And um, here we have you know, one of these really great inventions that was done that was outside the box. So part of the challenge of process is, always to, is also to encourage others to take those small risks, make experiments, um, and be able to consistently generate small wins. So by taking little baby steps, um, having some failures and letting that be okay, you'll generate wins and actually grow into bigger, bigger wins. But you can't do that unless you're willing to take some risks yourself. Yeah, that's right. And sometimes, you know, you take some risks and the risks don't work out. But that's, that, that's the time that's most important to encourage people to continue to take risks. That's right, Mark. So give, um, I like to give people a chance to I like to give people a chance to work on things um, because they're going to do it different and it's okay for them to do it differently. One, it gives me an opportunity to work on the things that I need to be focusing my attention on, and it gives it gives them the creativity to do something differently and bring more to the table. So love this one challenge the process. It's a great practice. Uh, the fourth one is enabling others to act. So that builds on challenging the process. Um, once people are able to take those baby steps and you're encouraging them to act, um, it builds trust and it strengthens their ability to be able to make decisions. And you, um, th this practice really does foster, build trust and foster relationships in your work group. So being able to be, um, be a support to them Know that, have them know that you're there for them and um, encouraging them through wins and struggles. So the best leaders really actually develop new leaders, right? It's not just a quote, it's a truism. Organizations are filled with, are filled with true leaders that thrive. Um, they don't just wait for those anointed few, to, the anointed few, to because those were actually fail, right? You really have to be able to move forward and be part of the action. The last one, of course, is encourage the heart. Oh, thank you. And um, this one's the most fun for me because this is where you're recognizing contributions, um, sharing appreciation for individual ex excellence as well as your team, and. Um, you, there, in everything that in life, there's obstacles along the way. So you want to take the time to um, take a breath, recognize things that are done well, um, learn from them, and uh, the best the best leaders really plan for small wins and encourage their teammates um, when they have struggles or setbacks. So um, I like What's this. What's the story on that picture, Judy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's here just um, on Halloween. So. Um, we had this. We had this great project that we worked on. It was called Dairy Dell, and it was a stream enhancement project. It was five years in the making because it had multiple partner agencies, and um, it took a long time to actually uh, procure the land to be able to do this stream improvement. And uh, so along the way, we had continued to do the design while other folks were building relationships to be able to um, work with different agency, regional partner agencies. And once we got to, um, I don't know, probably three years down the road, we thought it was all going to fall apart, but then it all came together. Everyone was working towards that shared vision. And uh, we 
purchase the land. And that was a big step because we could, it was true that we could move forward on this project. And so we actually had a, a milestone win where we had a celebration here in-house um, just to say, hey, we got the design done, we've got the land, let's have pie and cake and um, have a, a great party about this. And then um, once we got the project in the ground, we, um, did a, we ended up submitting for a state award, the DSL state award, and we won that. We were the Stream Enhancement Award for the state of Oregon. And um, we got to go meet the governor and get a plaque. So that's another point for everybody to kind of um, participate and be part of that celebration. And then in Halloween, which is getting to this picture, um, because I don't really have pink hair. And that's my daughter behind me, um, one of my very important values. So she's wearing her rainbow wig. <laughs> On Halloween, we did a celebration with all the team members and all our partner agencies. And so um, great opportunity to have touch point celebrations, recognize the people, um, and really encourage um, uh, the community and um, the values of this project. You know, I think sometimes, that, that's a really important point. I think sometimes, you know, we're so busy that the temptation is to move right into the next project and go, yeah, yeah, that was good, but we, we got all these other things to do. But there's real value in, in, as you said, taking a breath, stopping, and really recognizing the accomplishment and recognizing those who contributed to it. So, yeah, this is, a, I agree. I, I, this is one of the really important ones that oftentimes gets a little bit overlooked. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to hand this back over to you, Mark. Great. Well, I just wanted to mention once again that we've taken this uh, from the Leadership Challenge. Um, if, so if you haven't got a copy, I'd strongly encourage you to. It's a, it's a great investment. It's only $18. If you have your copy and haven't started reading, I won't, won't, I won't, won't publicly shame you. I'll just <laughs> suggest that it would be a great opportunity, especially you know here in the winter. I don't, you know, where you all are, but here in uh, Portland, it's a great time to stay indoors and do some reading because it's uh, gray and rainy as it usually is every winter. So again, um, the book has been much improved. The examples are much better, uh, and I, I think it's very relevant to today. So let's go ahead and do that uh, deeper dive into Model the Way, and we're going to walk through a little, just a little bit more detail about what it means to model the way. So the two things really that are key to this point is one, you need to clarify your values as a leader. And you have to understand what your personal leadership values are. And we're going to go through an exercise which I hope will help you do that. And then you all, then you have to set an example. You have to make those public. Believe it or not, I know it's kind of scary stuff sometimes. You have to make those public. What are your leadership values? Make those public because then once you make those public, the important thing then really is to show, demonstrate that you are are your actions are consistent with your values. So it's a really important part of this because the next step is to work with your team and develop a set of shared values. So the, so you're going to model how you live out how you live out your values and then when you work with your team on a particular project or something a, a thing you're trying to accomplish, you're trying to lead them through, very important then you develop these shared values that the team holds and then you all exhibit those values and you hold the team to them. So there's a video here. Uh, we're not going to play it today. It, it didn't come across very well in the webinar format, but I encourage you to take a peek at it if you'd like to look at it. It'll be loaded up in the version uh, that, that you can download from the website. So again, we're going to clarify your values by finding your voice and, affirm, and, then, and then affirming shared values. Let your values guide you. Another important part, you have to say it in your own words. It's got to be, it's got to be meaningful to you. So we've got this exercise, but you, you, can, you need to put your own words around these, around these values. And then you can find commitment through clarifying what your values are. It's surprising. We always have gut feels about things. And when we can articulate these values, I think it really helps us come, in, come into alignment with those gut feelings that we sometimes have when we're trying to make decisions or maybe perhaps we've made a decision that doesn't feel right later. And that's probably because it's an incongruity with your values or maybe perhaps it's an incongruity with the shared values that the team has. So it's really important to get these things into alignment. 
When I, when I think about this one too, it's the time of year when we're starting to think about New Year's resolutions and um, you know, thinking about what do you want to do differently next year and what being able to model the way. You, you're putting together, I'm going to be putting together my goals for my one-year goal, my five-year goal. And to be able to know where you want to get, where you want to go, you need to know what your values are. And so this was a really great exercise for me to get set up to be able to talk about goal setting for next month. Yeah, it is a great time for that kind of reflection, exactly. So affirming the shared values, give people reasons to care, right? If, they, if you have a shared value, that's, it's a reason for people to care about what, you're, what they're doing, what they're working on. And a really important point here is you need to forge unity, you can't force it. So in other words, these truly have to be shared values by the team. They can't just be uh, the leader's values or maybe two or three people in the group's values. They really have to become the shared values. So I mentioned this before, set the example by aligning actions with shared values. Live those shared values. Spend your time and attention wisely. This is a really important one. There's, there's, a, there's a part in the book which, I, which resonated with me in particular, which said, you know, at the end of the week, you really ought to review your calendar. Have you spent your time on the things that you say you value, the things that are important, and the things that are going to help the team move ahead? So it's, it's really important that you spend your time and attention wisely because if you say teamwork is really important but you don't, the team doesn't meet, the team doesn't communicate very well, you haven't made those opportunities available for folks, then, you're, then you're there, you've got that incongruity again. So you want to bring those back into alignment. Um, language can be very important. Choose carefully the words you say, especially when you're around your team, the group that you're working with. Those things, people are listening for you as a leader that your words match what you say you're going to do, right? So it's important to watch your language and how you talk about things. You want to ask purposeful questions. So in other words, how can I get conversations started about those values by asking very some questions, right? How can I bring draw those out of the group and how can we make sure that we're living those shared values? And this is a really important one. Seek feedback. We all have people in our workplaces who are our trusted, trusted colleagues. Ask them, am I living to the values that I say I am? And if not, please tell me. Help me out. You know, help guide me a little bit here. So you definitely want to seek feedback because, believe it or not, everybody sees it. Everyone sees if you're not living according to your values. Well, and also people want you to be successful. And so they might not feel comfortable giving you some constructive creative criticism, but if you open up and you're willing to say, I want the feedback, people slowly will be able to feel trust and be able to give you that feedback. Well, absolutely. And it actually models mm -hmm. the behavior you'd like to see in them as well, right? That they right. become open to feedback as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really important thing. So back to teaching others to model values, right? So an important thing, if you have a critical incident, you need to debrief it, right? If something happened in the project you're working on, make sure you confront it and talk about it. Talk about if it wasn't in alignment with the values. How are we going to make that? How are we going to bring this back together? This isn't about finding someone to punish. It's not a search for the guilty. It's, <laughs> it's really just about trying to bring the group, bring the team back to being in alignment with the, with the values that they've, they've brought. Uh, storytelling, of course, is really important. If you have great examples of how maybe uh, some members of the team have really been modeling the values. Um, one example I thought of is you know, suppose that uh, teamwork and collaboration is a shared value. You've got two people on your team that have not historically perhaps haven't gotten along to, <laughs> so well together. And person makes the effort, goes over, and you, and you see them collaborating. That would be a great story to tell and relay to the rest of your team because they because wow, that person I know doesn't you know get along very well with so and so, but yet they're they're really trying to live out these shared values. Mm -hmm. It's a great point. opportunity to do that. And then, of course, you always want to have your systems and processes reinforcing those, those shared values. All right, so we've come to the, the personal leadership values exercise. Took this from some training materials that are part of the, uh, uh, the workshop materials that they provide with the leadership challenge. They had this pretty comprehensive, what I found to be a pretty comprehensive list of personal leadership values. They're all listed here. Um, and they're just, so, so you all know, obviously, this is just alphabetical. There's no sense of, you know, it could have been listed the reverse alphabetical, it could have been randomized, but these are just the ones in, in the work that they've done with leaders, and these are the ones that have typically been 
pointed to as personal leadership values. You'll notice that on the, uh, uh, the right-hand column, it says other number one, two, three, and four. That's so that if you do see that, hey, I have this value and I don't see it on the list up here, or it's not quite this, it's a little bit different. There's an opportunity for you uh, to put your own value in there. Mm -hmm. So what you can find at the website, and uh, Mike will send out a link to it after the webinar today, you'll find a, a real simple spreadsheet that I put together, and it contains all of those values you just saw on the previous page, and this is your chance to prioritize them and try to really discover, really hone in on what are your personal leadership values. So you'll see I've got, got two columns. Column B is the ones that you get to just grab the cells and drag over as you rate them. Um, for everything from you're going to rate them first initially is not important, moderately important, and extremely important. And JD, you had a nice variation. I, I like what you did. Yeah, I like that in column A it always stays there so you can get back to the original. What I chose to do was move everything over to column B, moderately important, because I didn't have very many that were not important. Uh, but it gave me an opportunity to say, is this more important or less important. So I could just move it one way or the other from the moderately important column. So once you've done that, once you've done that, so you want to do that initial sort, not important, moderately important, or extremely important, and I had the same trouble. I, I frankly, this is a great list of things. I, I wish I could I wish I could be many, almost all of these things, but obviously if everything's important, then nothing is important. Right. So this is a forced choice, right? So uh, as you'll see in a minute, we, we get some opportunities to kind of keep narrowing the list down. But So you just drag the cells over, moderately important, extremely important, not important. And then in the next step, um, you get a chance to go to your top ten, which I needed to do because I could not pick. This was a definitely an iterative process for me. I could not pick. Uh, I had too many things and extremely important. I, I did too. Yeah, I just couldn't go to five. Yeah, it helps having that intermittent top ten list. Yeah, exactly. So, so we went to top ten, went to top five. This is just a simple Excel spreadsheet. You can, you know, you can do anything. You, if you need to do an additional sorting, feel free. You know, use it, use it however you want to. You need to add some values on here that you didn't see, um, then. Um, yeah, it, it, it certainly is wide open for you. It's just something to help you out. Um, I've got a note here that, uh, that we may have had some audio problems initially, so let me just reintroduce myself. This is hey, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Mark's top five. So <laughs> as we mentioned earlier, uh, a leader has to be willing to share what their values are. And so these are, are the ones that came out as my top five. Uh, I'm Mark Poling. I'm the, the chair of the PNCWA Leadership Committee, and I'm also uh, I work here at Clean Water Services as the business operations director. And with me is I'm Jadine Stensland, um, also a member of the leadership committee, and I work here at Clean Water Services with Mark and um, do conveyance engineering. Yes, and we're here in our in our Chinook conference room overlooking the lake that has surrounded our <laughs> has surrounded our beautiful facility today. We've well arranged that we've had the last couple weeks. But. So let me go back into uh, the top five. Uh, boy, this was a, this is a tough list to live up to. I, I, I'm, you know, it's kind of funny too because these are things that are important to me, but I also looked at them and I thought, man, these are, this is going to require me to be serious about some of these things, although not too serious because, as you can see, humor is one, <laughs> is one of my values. That's good. I like that. Yeah, yes, I do like to laugh. And, and uh, I'll, I'll freely admit that. I'll freely admit that. But the reason you see the uh, uh, the, the graphic up there about the, uh, Martin Luther King Weekend of Service, um, uh, one of the ways that I've been trying to live out uh, my value of service is I've been a, a campaign coordinator here for our combined charities, of which United Way is one. And I've done that for probably most of the years that I've been here at the district, so that's about 19 years. I've probably been the coordinator for about 14 or 15 of those years. I've been on the, and I've also been on the fundraising committee for United Way, and uh, I'm, I'm putting together a group to, for the weekend of service here in the upcoming January, and we're going to, I think we're going to do tree planting. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do pre tree planting over in King City, actually kind of a nice tie-in because we've been doing a lot of tree planting here at Clean Water Services <laughs> over the last 10 years, and in particular the last year or so. So 
Uh, I just want to give you an example of how I try to live out the things that are, are, are values to me. Okay, like you said, you have to be willing to let people know what my values are. And I have to say, when I first looked at that list, there were so many great words on there. And the things that spoke to me when I first looked at it were courageous, decisive, service. I, those were statements that I knew are me, who I am. But when I had to force it down to you know, what are my core values, I came up with a different list. And I was, I was a little bit surprised that I wanted to change it. And then I thought, well, no, because this is really who I am. And um, if I didn't have a good work-life balance, I couldn't be courageous. I couldn't find the passion to do the things that I do. Um, I wouldn't If I didn't have happiness and um, working in an open-minded place, I would be, I would have a hard time um, being decisive or putting the extra time in to do the service or, or oriented things that I do. So yeah, um, family, happiness, open-mindedness, um, teamwork. I um, also, um, I've always been involved um, with a lot of team sports. In fact, I've um, w competed at a really high level. And um, when you compete at the national and world championship levels, People think you're very highly competitive, but I was on a team, um, I was in a team atmosphere. And to be successful as a team, you have to be able to want other people to excel and be supportive of them. And um, that is definitely the way that I excel, is being able to be a support to other people and have them um, have successes and be successful. That makes, that fills my bucket. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And then yeah. and my last one was trust. Just I, I have to I, I have to be able to trust the people that um, that they're going to let me do the things that um, are important to me and that I can give them trust and that they're going to take care of the things that they need to take care of so that we can all be successful. You know, I've found over the last few years in particular, I've been thinking about that, thinking a lot about trust, and it's amazing how much easier everything is when you are working with people, groups that you trust. Right. Yeah, it really does make a difference. And, that's a great value. So who are those, those uh, awesome looking people there in the <laughs> well, photo? So that is my family. Like it, 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 It's alphabetical, but family really is the top of my list. So my husband and my two kids. Um, I am a Southern California girl, so we go to the beach all the time, even though it's cold here in Oregon, and <laughs> getting that freezing cold water. <laughs> yeah, it is, it, yes, it is freezing cold here. Yeah. They, although, well, they do look a little chilly. <laughs> <laughs> but we bundle them up in my suit. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, JD. Thanks for sharing that. So, personal values really do drive commitment, and we talked about this already. But leaders really need—you need to do what you say you will do. So, I don't know if that's, that's too hard an acronym for me to to say it, but uh, you really need to do what you say you'll do. Uh, as I was looking through the book, preparing for the webinar today, I ran across these these two questions, uh, and, and I thought. These are tough. So, if, so the question is, if your team, the first one, if your team found a sheet of paper with your values on it without your name, would would they know those are your values? In other words, to, if they would look around the office, would they say, "Well, I, I think I know who this is. This is, you know, this is Mark or this is JD," because I know it's really important for JD and her family is really important, and that trust is a really big thing with her. She wants to trust the people she works with. Um, and then, uh, and then the second one, the corollary question, might perhaps even tougher. If your team found the values on a sheet of paper with your name at the top, would they agree, based on based the actions, on your actions? Yes, that they see every day from you, right? So that really is the standard. It's really beginning. It's modeling, modeling the values so that when you work with your team and you create a shared sense of values, they know that, hey, you're serious about it because you try to live out your your personal values as well. So I think a couple of great questions to think about as you are continuing your leadership journey. We've been, we've been pushing on this a lot, but why is it important? You have to find your voice. It represents who you are as a person. And the whys gives you inner confidence, gives you the ability to express ideas, to choose a direction, to make tough decisions. I find that tough decisions, if you go back to the things that, are, that you value, the things that are important, Tough decisions, while they still may not be easy, they're easier to make if you really go back to your values and, and you base them on, on your values. It helps you to act with determination. 
I know this is the right way to go. This is the right place to go because it's consistent with either my personal values or it's our shared values as a team. And of course, it allows you to take charge of your life, right? You want to align with the things that are important to you. you know, align with the things that are important. All right, so we're gonna we're getting to the to the end of the material here. This is just a, a quick quick reminder. I want to model the way by setting an example. Inspire a shared vision by talking about your hopes and dreams. Challenge the process by discussing your leadership behavior. Enable others to act by sharing the feedback. We talked earlier about feedback really being important. And you want to encourage the heart by thanking people for the feedback, right? <laughs> the worst thing you can do is ask for feedback and then get real frowny about it <laughs> or, or visibly upset. You really need to thank them because they have given you a gift. Now, I, I had someone say this to me years ago about, about feedback. When someone gives you true, honest feedback, it's really a gift because what they're saying is, here's something that, that so that just so that you can now understand how others see you, right? And then that gives you the ability to, am I aligned with my values? Am I really living out my values? And um, I can help come into better alignment with those things. It'll make you a happier person. I'm convinced of that. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's next? All right, here's where you have things to do now. So homework assignments, download the spreadsheet, determine your top five. Um, it, it, it didn't take me that long. Um, I was surprised. I thought it would take me longer than that. But, but kind of once you kind of go through it step by step, the, it floats to the top. It floats to the top. Um, something you can do every week. Review and reflect on them daily. Am I living my values? I know... There are times when I've done this, that, or the other thing, and I think, oh, man, I should not have done that. That was, ah, I could have done that a lot better. I really wish I'd done that better. But, you know, if you ever find yourself in that situation, it's okay that you can go back and, and tell people, hey, I messed up. It's important for leaders to admit that they make mistakes, too. You're, you're modeling that, hey, nobody's perfect. I don't expect you to be perfect, right? Right. You can go back and, 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 and correct those things, right? You want to write down weekly observations of how you model your values to those around you, right? So you can look at your own self and then, with courage, trusted colleague or even, even perhaps even better, with someone in your group, ask them to give you some feedback. And I think that um, this exercise has helped me, um, again, with the New Year's resolutions right around the corner, is to put some time in my calendar so that I have it just a standing appointment so that I can take the time to do this. Very good. So if you haven't been reading or you don't have the book, get the book. Please, please keep reading. Keep your observation record. Reflect on it weekly. And share with your accountability colleague to help you become a better leader. We talked about this at the workshop, so if you were part of the workshop, um, have your accountability colleague there, someone who's going to, you can hold each other accountable to keep making progress, to become a better leader. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, talk to a trusted colleague at work. Ask them if they'll become your accountability colleague, right? Hey, I'm working on this thing. I want to become a better leader. Would you, would you be willing to work with me and working together, kind of keep each other accountable because it's so easy for the urgent the things that are you know, sort of at our front door every day or at our front, the front of our desk every day to take precedence over um, things that are perhaps more important, but they're not maybe as urgent in that moment. So, so be sure to share that with someone that you trust and someone that will help you uh, become a better leader. So from a, from a webinar standpoint, we're here today, webinar number one. And the next one will be, we've got three webinars in total. Next one will be on February. We're planning for February 17th, 2 to 3 Pacific time. And we're going to go over practice 2 and 3, inspire a shared vision and challenge the process. The last webinar, number three, will be sometime in April. Uh, we're going to do the last two, enabling others to act and encouraging the heart. And then May 4th, and with some more details on that to come, we're planning to do our closing workshop at the Pacific Northwest Section AWWA Conference in Boise. And we're going to have there a, a, a year of what I'm calling defining and living the practices. And in this case, the leaders, we had some, we had some great leaders who joined us in that first workshop, and I believe uh, we've got one or two that may come back with, with us, but this is an opportunity, and I'm going to make that ask right now, 
For those of you that are trying to become better leaders, you're trying to use these practices to help yourself and help your organization, or, or perhaps it's outside of your uh, outside of business and it's in your community. We're going to ask you to what's it like? What's it been like as you've tried to go down this leadership journey? So we'd love to have some folks who'd be willing to step forward and uh, talk a little bit about their journey's been this year, right? To to, to model that uh, taking some risks. Yeah, and to be able to uh, encourage others to act. We're taking that opportunity here, right? Um, one other thing about uh, maybe speakers for other webinars. Right, right. And I had some interest from a couple folks, actually a couple folks who weren't able to make today, who have been interested in uh, becoming a speaker on these webinars. It's been really great having J.D. on the other side of the table. The other webinar I've done is just dead silence, and it's very hard. It's a very, I find that's a very hard atmosphere to present in. But uh, I've had some interest from a couple of folks who may help us with some of the webinars. So if you have an interest in that, oh, we'd love to have you help us. You don't even have to be co-located with us. If you'd even like to just talk about how you worked on one of the practices, that would be fantastic because we're looking for great examples to provide encouragement for everyone. That's right. Um, I'm always reading leadership stuff. I found that LinkedIn is a great place to find stuff on leadership. They've got all kinds of uh, content providers, uh, folks that write for them that, that LinkedIn is hired to write for them, as well as links to other folks. Uh, I found this one just the other day. I thought that I'd throw that along to you. And certainly when you download the presentation, it's, it's, it was an interesting link. It talked about values, putting values to work. Other tools, uh, obviously the book. There's some workshop materials. They have a mobile tool uh, if you're interested in using that, and some workbooks as well. And we're now at questions. So personal leadership, I, I love this because, you know, it's amazing how much you can tell that the work that they've done really is about the research. This isn't about necessarily somebody's sort of, this is my approach to leadership. This has really been a, a large research project. What, make, what do leaders do when they're at their best? And it's amazing how many times you find quotes like things you like people like Stephen Covey, who is obviously a recognized, a recognized uh, leadership consultant and author, of course, of the, the habits of successful people. And uh, I like this one. Personal leadership is the process of keeping your vision and values before you and aligning your life to be congruent with them. That's a great one. Yeah, that's a great quote. So with that quote, we'll start taking a few questions. Yeah, so on the... Um the bar on your right, there is an opportunity for you to type in questions, and we'll be able to answer them here. So go ahead and take take a chance and uh, ask us some questions about Model the Way or any of the five practices. I think one of the things we were talking about um, as we were preparing for this is when um, you, you have so much to do, you have so much on your plate, how do you start? Um, doing these practices? How do you get some practices? How do you get some um, opportunities to model the way? How do you take those first steps? Yeah, and I think that's the first step is to define what those what those five values are. If you, you know, four, if you have six, but whittle it down to a small number. Think about a situation which perhaps might even make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. See if you can demonstrate that value and then reflect on it during the day. So that you might. So if your value is teamwork, how do I show up at a team meeting, right? How do I show up at a team meeting where I may not necessarily want to be there or I'm stressed about other things that are going on that day? Did I still make sure that I was present that day, that I demonstrated that it is important for us to work together, right? Did I, is there someone that don't, normally doesn't speak on the team, right? That I encourage them, kind of draw them out a little bit to get some of their ideas on the table. So. I think it's something that you just have to be purposeful and you have to be, have an intent about in order to in order to really start diving into some of these behaviors and really becoming a better leader. That's great, Mark. All right. Well, we are always open to questions afterward. Happy to answer. Please email me. I'd be happy to answer questions. Give me a phone call. Love to talk on the phone, as you can tell. Blah blah blah. <laughs> I love to talk. So I'm happy to I'm happy to talk to folks. I want to uh, uh, let me see. I've got a few more links for you, which will be part of um, some more things on credibility uh, and things on values that you're certainly welcome to take a look at. And at this point, oh, do we have a question? Yeah, we have a couple here now. Right, so um, the first one. 
is um, can you, you can provide some suggestions on how to, to respond when a supervisor does not share one of your core values and you are trying to model the way? That's a good question. You want me to take the first crack at that? Yeah, let me take All that. right. Well, it is difficult when your supervisor doesn't share your value, but I think it's still really important for you to, for you to be consistent with who you are. And, and so even though they don't value it, you need to demonstrate that you value it. That doesn't mean to say that you need to be in your supervisor's you know, face or, or be necessarily be confrontational, but if, if it's important to you, in the end, you, you need to live it. You need to own it. Because if you don't, you're, you'll be, frankly, I think you'll be unhappy. It, it won't feel right. Now, that back to that gut feel of, I'm not living up to who I am as a person, right? If I think treating everyone with respect is one of the most important things, and I see my supervisor perhaps not demonstrating that all the time, look for an opportunity, perhaps when they, when they are in a place where they can take some feedback to say, well, you know, I think so and so felt pretty down after you know this this talk. You know, you know, when you were talking with him about this issue, um, you know, and maybe they don't even realize it. Maybe it's just the way they were, were raised as a supervisor, as they say, mm -hmm. and they don't may not even be uh, aware of it. So I would just look for opportunities when someone would be open to some feedback, so you could explain why it's important to you, and and so they at least they understand where you're coming. Yeah, I'd add that um, being able to express, being able to be comfortable expressing what your core values are and then reiterating those so that the people around you know what's important to you. And so be, be open and be able to share your values. Yeah, and the risk you'll take in that because sometimes people love to point out when you're not living up <laughs> to your values. So you definitely have a little bit of risk if you do that. But that's okay. Consider it a gift. As, as I mentioned earlier, feedback is a... As, a wise person once said to me, feedback is a gift, and take it as such so that you can be better at living out your values. i got another question here. Um, can, do you have any further thoughts on personal values versus professional values and um, what you want to learn to accomplish? You know, I've thought a little bit about that. I, I did. When I did my exercise, I thought about leadership. What do you want your team to accomplish? Oh, between, team to accomplish yeah, between, between personal and professional values. Gotcha. Um, oh, so the, the shared versus, I got it. I, I think I understand what you're asking. So the your personal leadership values versus your shared leadership values. You know, you can't expect other people to live out your values, right? I mean, everyone's got their own set. Right. You know, it was kind of funny, Jadine and I were comparing our notes uh, as we are getting ready for the webinar, and you know, our top five are not the same, right? We have we have five completely different things, but I will bet you, you know, if you go just a little bit below that, we have a well, Probably the top ten. Them. We have yeah, they're in our top ten. So, so, um, but remember, you can't force shared values. It has to the team has to develop its shared values. Um, most everything on that list is a good thing, right? So there is so none of them necessarily are bad, but. But you can't expect the team to live out your values. You live out your values within the context of what the team develops as a set of shared values. Right. Any, any other questions coming in? Yeah, I'm looking here. All right, we're checking it out. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think um, just a little bit more, um, more deeper into personal values versus professional values. Um, both work, both work and home are important. To how do I, how do you focus your action values on problem solving and communications? Hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I thought about this. I, this is the path I started down originally. Are these my work ones, or are they are they just my like when I'm not at work? And I, I had a hard time separating the two. I, I think I mean those are my values, and whether I'm at work or whether I'm at home. And um, I really couldn't. It would be it felt to me it felt would feel odd to have one set of values when I'm at work. Now these are just for me as an individual. It's not shared values are different. But for me as an individual, it would feel, I, 
I don't think I could do that. I don't think I could have one set for work and one set for uh, when I'm not at work. So for me, uh, the values ended up being, they are my personal values, as well as the ones I hope that I can exhibit while I'm at work. Yeah, and I think I'm still struggling with that too. Yeah. Um, so like I said, when, when I think of my values, courageous, decisive, service-oriented, uh, stewardship, those, those are the words that come to me that are my action words. But when I had to do the forced um, choice, down to five. Down to five. If I didn't, if I didn't have a work-life balance, I wouldn't be have the passion to be courageous. You know, so I, I said, family is going to be more important. I, for me to be successful, I'm going to make sure that family is important. Even though it, my family's not at work, um, making sure that I myself am able to be supportive of other people at work, to for their family and relationships, and myself makes it a, makes it one of my core values. Well, and, and if it wasn't, you know, how do you bring work-life balance, right? right? If family wasn't uh, one of your top values, it, that's going to dictate how you have that work-life balance. And, as you just pointed out, for the people on your team. Right. You know, I, I think that's one of the, the things I've always felt very supportive here at the district is we do have that. I mean, if there's a, if ever a family issue, we're always encouraged, go take care of your family. Do what you need to do. We'll... we'll We'll get through whatever we need to, and you come back when your family is okay. So I, I've always, always felt very supported, and uh, I think we do strive to have a good work-life balance here. But, but again, it's back to how they separate it, right? Mm -hmm. That's not that you so, don't, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, like I said, even doing this exercise, I always struggled. Like, could yes. that be a core value for me as a professional core value? So I could see how others would struggle with it too. And remember, it's just the top five. You may, you may want to live your ten. Good for you. Yeah. Right? Actually, <laughs> I hope I demonstrate many more than ten of the things on the list, but but uh, it's just hard to keep that many items in front of you to make sure that you're you're going through. But yeah, I would certainly hope that just many of those things that I'm able to demonstrate, both you know, in professional and, and personal. Yep. Yep. All right. Anything else? I don't. I have lots of thank yous and gratitude. So. I appreciate the feedback um, that we're getting on here. Oh, thank you very much. We, we appreciate it. Sorry for the, if we had a little bit of technical difficulties at the start. We apologize for that. And um, we just want to thank you very much for taking the time, taking an hour out of your day uh, to listen to us, to try to become better leaders. I think you'll find it very worthwhile. Um, Jadine, thank you very much for, for being here and for helping. Michael, uh, on our, our technical support at, at back at the PNCWA office. Uh, watching the beautiful snowfall there over in southern Idaho, and uh, and let 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 us be the first to wish you a great holiday, and we will hopefully uh, well we won't hear you well you may hear some of us talking in uh, in February when we do the next when we do the next webinar so thank you keep learning and uh, have a great holiday yes happy holidays everyone. Thank you, Mark and Jadine. <clears throat> this is Mike in the PNCWA office again. Uh, you're going to all get an email very shortly with uh, the handouts and the exercises, so you can do that uh, uh, values exercise as Mark asked. And uh, please do not hesitate to email the office with any questions that you may not have gotten answered or email Mark and Jadine uh, directly. Uh, apologize for that. Uh, 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 glitch between audio and uh, visual uh, difference there when we first started, but I think we got all caught up okay. Thank you very much, Mark and Jadine. Thank you especially. I'm going to leave the uh, <clears throat> webinar open here for a moment so that as you uh, exit as you close your screen, you will get a very brief evaluation form. And thank you all for participating and uh, see you next webinar.